The American film director, Brian De Palma, who I'm just about to meet for the first time, seems to rub people up the wrong way. He's made bad films like Obsession and Phantom of Paradise and the recent Mission Impossible. As his career moves from the late 60s radical comedies to the 70s Hitchcockian thrillers to epic gangster pictures of the 80s and 90s, Pauline Kael's phrase, the Alan Gator Grin in his movies. In Carrie, he launched the career of John Travolta. His latest film, Snake Eyes, is bursting with those ideas and techniques. And, you know, Greetings was sort of very uh, kind of a radical view of what was going on in America at the time. But as I found myself on programs much like this... <laughs> It's the sort of maverick quality in some of your work. Not all of it. There's some of you. I think you've made some terrible films. I hope it's okay to say that. Um, Why are you here? I'm here because I like you talking have, to filmmakers. You have a genuine interest in cinema. I have a genuine interest in cinema. Don't you want to be famous too? I mean, your face is on the screen too. That's not my reason for being here. Oh. My reason for being here is because, I'll tell you why, Brian, because, <laughs> because um, so much of, of uh, film culture in Britain uh, is about, 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 about the Hopelessly aspects. misunderstood in your country. Jumping forward to Casualties of War 1989, some people said it was almost like an apology for the way that uh, your film, your women suffered in previous films. Was it? No. That's why I'm here. A truth seeker. And I love it. David Lynch, uh, you don't like doing interviews, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> Why are you sitting on this sofa then? Uh, to do the American filmmaker Martin Scorsese, who made Taxi Driver and Raging Bull and Goodfellas, the idea is to get deeper into the world of Martin Scorsese movies, and we're going to film it all, and you're going to see it all. And you did Boxcar Bertha, yes. uh, which is one of the few films of yours that I don't like. I hope it's okay yes, to say that. That's all right. I'm, I'm not uh, that fond of it either. But what it was was... Roman Polanski's made some of the most daring films of the last 40 years. Well, is it supposed to be a bit of a Milky Way or something? It's dust in the projector beam. Is it true that you put the camera close to her and that added to this jitteriness of her performance? No, I, I put the camera where it's required for the given shot, for the given yeah. scene. What is Chinatown then? What does it symbolize in town script? Oh Christ, you keep asking me these questions where I'm embarrassed to answer. It's like you ask... You used yourself the word symbol there, didn't you? Yeah, but you know, I don't explain symbols. It's like asking a poet to explain a metaphor, you know? And I just uh, don't do this, you know. Okay. And there's certain things I don't do anymore, you know. <laughs> How did you do that? With uh, uh, a wire. At the time that this film was on release, and it's a film that many now rate as one of your best, your personal life went into free fall, didn't it? You were arrested on six counts of unlawful sex, 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 sex. Again, it seemed to the critics that you were in some way making a film that was either an apology for the fact that you, you had um, slept oh, with this girl. Them. Well, talk um, to the critics. Why do you get me but, here? You know, you want me to talk about those things. It's all just total nonsense. The reason I get you here is because I like some of your films very much and uh, I want to talk to you about why, but at the same time, it's not a surprise looking back mm -hmm. to see the way that people saw the connection between the story of this film mm -hmm. and what had happened in your real life. You can't have been surprised. Look, we both have uh, uh, cross legs, we both have black jackets, we both have watches on the left wrist, both have black shoes. You can find so many similarities. If you look for it, you just find anything you but, want. But come on, these are shallow things you're talking about. No, the, the, they're not. The, they're they're, they're as shallow. Things. You're talking about trivial things like what you eat or what treasures you've got on. Because I'm talking the, yeah. about things like the fact that you had to leave a country. And what does it have to do with this film? Because the judicial system. But do you think that, 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 that the, the choice of, it, of, 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 of a motion picture has, may may have something to do with my problems at, 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 at the time with the, with American justice or society. This, first of all, you pick up uh, the, the things from, from the book and you present it as a real theme of the book. No, the book, it's about position 
of a, of a woman in the, in the Victorian society. Which it's is what I said. It's subtitle, and it has little to do with everything that you said before. It's also about destiny, basically about destiny. Much more interesting from the f philosophical standpoint. And there's some kind of naive associations that you're trying to bring I, up. It's a book, Roman, that I know well, and I, I, I know it's got those points. What I have found difficult in the conversation we've had today is your apparent refusal to accept that exciting relationship between someone and their work. The fact that momentous effects, uh, events in people's lives can some way change the tone of their work, the mood of their work, they can the change. subject of, of their work. Of course it's nothing they can. to do with what you eat or what treasures you wear or what watch you have on. I don't think that it's so simplistic that because you live this, that immediately you will make your film as a reaction to it. And state of mind, yes, is affected by, by important events in your life, but you don't illustrate it so naively as you present it. I'm sorry, Mark. Uh, 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 here's a taxi. Uh, 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 uh. Moods, 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 moods. <laughs>